Happy Father's Day to all the guys out there, all the dad figures, biological dads, stepdads, foster dads, uh, single moms. Hey, um, y'all are awesome, and uh, we just we want to honor you today. If I have not yet had the chance to meet you, my name's John. I get this opportunity to pastor this amazing community of people who are not perfect, but we're trying to figure it out. Amen. And, and we believe that through Jesus, he can transform us, transform our hearts, transform our minds, so that we can begin to look more and more like him. I don't believe in a church that is about behavior modification. I think that when you give Jesus your heart and you say, Jesus, you have full access to my heart, he'll begin to change your heart. Therefore, your actions will begin to change as well. And so uh, we're just a whole bunch of people who we got issues, we're messed up. Maybe it's just me, because y'all are looking at me like, don't talk about me. And so, uh, but we're just glad that you're hanging out with us on Father's Day. Uh, next week, we're going to conclude uh, our series on wisdom. And then July 1st, we got something special planned, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. You just got to come out and find out. Uh, like I said, we're on our third week of our series, uh, Wisdom. And uh, there's a million things that you can talk about for a series, uh, there's a million topics in the Bible that we could look at. And, and so that's always a, a, a thing for me, like, God, what do you want me to talk about? Like, what, what topic? And, and I stumbled across this verse in Proverbs chapter 4, 7. And it says this, getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Whatever else you get, get insight. And so when something says that the most important thing that you could ever do is get wisdom, I'm like, hey, we should probably talk about wisdom. And, and so we've been on this journey of wisdom. We've been looking at the book of uh, Proverbs. And, and the book of Proverbs, it's written by a man named King Solomon. Now, little backdrop about King Solomon. We learned this in week one of our series. Uh, King Solomon's dad, David, had just died. And, and King Solomon, he's a young lad. And uh, he he's, he's, has a little bit of anxiety going on because he, he feels like, God, I'm too young to be a king. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to act. I don't know how to treat people. And so King Solomon uh, one night was, was sleeping and God showed up and he said, Solomon, I will give you anything that you ask for. And rather than asking for riches, rather than asking that his enemies would be defeated, Solomon said, God, all I want is wisdom. And because of that, God said, uh, Solomon, you will be, from this point on, the wisest person to ever walk the face of the earth. And so I thought it was apropos to look at a book about wisdom that was written by the wisest man in the world. And so uh, this week we're going to be... Um, looking at Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 26. In week one, we also said that uh, the, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, and if you're here this morning, you grew up in church, don't worry. Um, we, uh, we define the fear of the Lord in three declarations, that God is awesome, God is holy, come on, and God is right, right on. And so, um, and so here is uh, the, the verse and the context of what we're going to be looking at this morning. It says this, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. How many guys want strong confidence? Three people, amen. <laughs> well, praise God. Uh, and his children will have a place of refuge. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. This morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, complete confidence, complete confidence. Let's pray one more time and then we'll, we'll jump into the message. Dear God, I thank you so much for this morning. God, I thank you uh, for this opportunity that we have to come together and to worship you, Father. God, I, I pray that today as I speak, God, that, that the words that come out of my mouth, Father, that it would fall on good ground on the hearts. God, that the seed that is sown, that it would produce a good harvest. God, we don't want to leave here the same way we came in. We got so many better things to do, God, than listening to, to people sing and, and to listen, listening to a guy talk, God. And so we want to leave changed, not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. 
So God, would you just change our hearts as we sit and as we listen? We love you so much. In Jesus' name, come on. Amen. Amen. Hey, do do you guys remember this thing right here? They're they're called Razor Scooters. You guys, this one is like extra, like the, the, the wheels are a little larger right because typically they're, they're a little smaller but but do you guys remember these let me just how about have a little fun while we're doing this huh and so don't mind me I got ADD we're just gonna and and so uh one day um I saw a whole bunch of back in the day there was there's these were like the thing right and so little kids they would have these razor scooters and I would always look at them and I would always say man this is so easy to do and I'm out of breath clearly I'm out of shape um, and, and I, and I, so I watched these little kids, they were, they were using this, this razor scooter and I was like, man, that's easy. That's easy. I can, I can do that. I can ride these scooters. And so, uh, I, I borrowed one or took one. I don't know how I had one. I ended up having one in my garage and, um, and, and so I just started riding it and, uh, they're pretty fun. They're, they're actually a lot of fun. And, um, and so I, I, I mastered the art of riding the Razor um, scooter. And then uh, one day I was, I was riding the scooter that I found in my garage. And um, <laughs> poor little six-year-old. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I was riding my, my scooter and I, and I saw like a whole bunch of uh, kids doing like stunts. On, on these things. They were jumping off curbs. They were um, kick flipping the back thing and flipping it. They were, they were going off of ramps. And I was like, I can do that. And so uh, I, I didn't do the ramp, but I did do the, like jumping off the curb. And, and, um, and I, I jumped on the curb. And you guys don't look impressed, but it's, it's not easy, okay? And um, and so I, I'm, here I am, I'm, I'm feeling at that moment that I, I'm doing like a little bit of tricks. I'm feeling a bit confident. You, you, have you guys ever just felt confident about something? And, and I'm feeling a bit confident like, like, I, like I, can, I can do this. I, I am the master. I am the Jedi master on the razor. And so um, after I was done hanging out with all the, the little kids with the scooters, um, I told him I had to go home, and so, um, so here I am, and this was about, I was about four years ago, okay, so this was about like, I was like 30, <laughs> and, um, and, and so, so here I am, I'm riding on my scooter, and at that moment, I'm confident. At that moment, uh, I'm very confident in myself, I'm very confident in the skills that I have, I'm very confident that, um, that I am a legit Razor scooter rider, okay? Now, if you've never ridden one of these scooters, th- again, this one is different, but typically on the Razor scooters, the wheels are like that, that big, right? They're, they're super small. And, and I didn't know that, um, that if there's anything that's in front of, of these wheels that is like riding full speed, but, but then putting on like the front hand brakes, right? Like you just like, you, you fly, and so I'm leaving the, the area where everyone's jumping curbs and stuff, and I'm scooting home, like, with swagger, okay? Like, I'm like, this is amazing. I got confidence, and I'm going, and I'm going, I'm going very fast. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if it was a rock or if it was a curb that was sticking out, but I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm booking it. I'm focused. I'm confident. All of a sudden, my front wheel hits whatever it is, and I'm like, ah. like slow motion, I eat it. I'm like on the ground face plant. And there's cars driving by. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And I get up and I'm all scratched up. I have cuts on my, my elbow, cuts on my knee. And, and uh, all of a sudden, how many of you guys know in that moment I wasn't too confident? But I was thinking about this idea of how easy it is to be confident in ourselves. I was very confident in my ability to ride this scooter, but it backfired on me. 
How many of you guys know that a lot of the times when you're too confident in yourself, it could blow up in your face? See, this morning we're, we're talking about confidence, and, and Solomon, he, he's talking about strong confidence. And before we go any further, I think it's very important to understand that the confidence in which Solomon is talking about, the confidence in which he said we can have strong confidence, it's important to understand that, that the confidence in which he's referring to it is not the confidence that is found in ourselves. It's, it's, it's not the confidence that, that we find in, in you or, or in, in, in me. He, he's talking about, he's referring to a different type of confidence. You see, because the traditional definition of self-confidence is this idea that we draw this confidence from ourselves, right? So I don't know about you, but I am way confident when I'm looking good. I'm way confident when, um, when I feel smart. I am way confident when I'm driving a better car. I am way confident when I'm in my perfect, sur are you guys with me? Like there's this thing, this idea that, that with self-confidence, it's, it's based off of what I, how I feel. It's based off of my, my thoughts and my feelings. And, and so we typically draw self-confidence from the way that we look, possessions IQ. However, the confidence that Solomon is referring to, the confidence when he says that we are in strong confidence, it's important to understand he's not referring to self-confidence. He, he's talking about something different. He, he, he's saying that, that there's this ability that we have to have strong confidence, but note that it's not, I'm not referring to the self-confidence, but I'm referring to something greater, something different, something stronger, something, something that is, is less shakable. Are you with me? And, and, and so... Solomon, he, he's not referring to self-confidence because the moment that I feel ugly, the moment I feel dumb, the moment things aren't going the way that I think and feel they should be going, what happens? I lose my confidence. And so how could you ever grow, gain strong confidence on something that is so fickle? You can't. And so Solomon, when he's saying, hey, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, he's saying this, that if you want strong confidence, it's not found in self, but it's found in God. The confidence that you and I need is found in a God who is stronger, who is bigger, who is wiser than what you and I could ever fathom ever imagine and and here here's kind of the way it works is that when my confidence dwindles my perspective begins to shift and when my perspective shifts the way that I begin to perceive myself shifts and when the way that I perceive myself when I perceive myself the wrong way, then all of a sudden I, I sit there and, and I begin to think, and maybe this is just me, but, but I begin to think, how could God ever use someone like me? Why would God ever want to use someone like me? I got acne. I don't feel good. I'm out of shape. Right? Confidence. When the confidence leaves, when it dwindles, perspective changes. So if your perspective is right here, Paul says that we would keep our eyes fixed on the realities of heaven. If, we keep our, if, if our perspective moves from here to here, then all of a sudden our worth. Have, have you ever just sometimes felt like, man, I just, my, my value has depreciated as a person. I, just, I, don't, feel, I don't feel valuable. I don't feel worthy. And then, and then you get to that place where how can God ever use someone like me? And here's kind of the big idea this morning, the thing that I really want you 
to understand is, is this idea that confidence is necessary for your calling. Confidence is necessary for your calling. Now, let me take a break here. I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know, like, if you're here and you believe in God or if you're here and you don't believe in God. But, but here's what I, I believe without a shadow of a doubt it, is this, that, that when God created you, that he, he created you with a purpose. He created you with a plan, for a plan. And so you're created for a reason. It's not by accident you are here. It's not by accident that you are sucking up air. Like it's for a purpose, it's for a reason. But you will never be able to accomplish your purpose if you never have first confidence. You need confidence. But not just confidence, but you need strong confidence. And when you establish your confidence in the fear of the Lord, when you establish your confidence in God, your confidence in accomplishing all that God has for you will rise. And so what we need to get at is this place where we find our confidence not just in ourself, but in something greater, something bigger. We see this type of confidence, this, this God confidence in the story of Solomon. It's in 1 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to give you a little backdrop of what's going on. <clears throat> but like I said earlier, uh, Solomon, he asked God, he said, God, all I want is wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. <clears throat> and so this, what we're about, what I'm about to talk to you about, it takes place directly after that. So God is like, Solomon, you will now be the wisest person on the face of the earth. And the Bible says that right after that, his wisdom is being, his wisdom becomes tested, okay? Okay. And so here's this story. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 3. And so Solomon, he, he just has been given this amazing gift of wisdom. And right after that, these two prostitutes come into his, um, into his court area, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. The point is, here he is and two prostitutes come in, okay? This is not a joke. This sounds like it could set up as a joke, but it's not a joke. And so here, here are these two prostitutes. They come in and, and they tell Solomon, Solomon, we have an issue. Uh-oh. They said, uh, one, one of the ladies said, uh, Solomon, we have a big issue here. Let me tell you what's going on, Solomon. Uh, so her and I, were in the same profession. And, um, and well, I had a baby and then she had a baby three days after. You can read the story, 1 Kings chapter 3. And, and she said, so uh, the other night we were sleeping. And uh, this lady over there, she actually rolled over her baby and suffocated her baby. Yeah, it's crazy. And, um, and, and King Solomon, you will not believe what she just did. Okay, here, here's what happened, King Solomon. She took her baby. She came over to my bed. She took my baby, put her baby where my baby was, and then she took my baby and put my baby next to her. Could you imagine Solomon? Like, I've had to do some counseling, but, like, this is over the top. And, and, and so, so here she is. She's like, and so Solomon, that's what happened. And then, and then Solomon, I woke up one morning. I woke up the next morning, and I just... Can't wait to see my baby. And she, she, she's telling King Solomon this. She, she grabs her baby and she's like, ah! She's like, what? This is not my baby. My baby's not Mexican. And she, and she, no, she didn't say that. You're not going to find that in the story. But she looks at her baby and she's like, this is not my baby. Where's my baby? And she looks and she realizes the other lady had her baby. And so they go to the king. And, and so now, now this was her story, right? There's always two sides to the story. And so King Solomon said, okay, let me hear your side of the story. And this lady's like, that is not how it went, king. That was not it. This is my baby. I don't know what she's talking about. She's delirious. She, she, I just, she just, 
I don't know. And then all of a sudden, like, it's getting a little tense in the room. Like, all of a sudden, the atmosphere goes from, like, King Solomon to, like, Jerry, Jerry. Right? Like, she's like, oh, no, hold my hoops. Right? Like, she, she, she's going. And they're, they're, like, back and forth. They're back and forth. And King Solomon, he has to be the judge. He has to, uh, he has to figure out what's, how, how to handle this. And what I want you to, to notice before we jump into the text is in this moment, Solomon is faced with an issue pertaining his calling. In this moment, Solomon is faced with having to, to figure out how I'm going to handle this situation. What I need you to understand is that Solomon right now is dealing with an issue involving his calling. But he, here's, here's what I also would like for you to understand is that whatever God has called you to, he's already given you the tools necessary, the gifts necessary for you to fulfill it. So though Solomon was faced with an issue, God had already given him the tools, a.k.a. for Solomon's case, the wisdom to handle the situation. But here's where confidence comes in. You can have all the tools in the world, but if you don't have the confidence to use the tools that God has given you, you're going to be stuck in your calling. And so here is Solomon. He, he's, he's having to deal with this situation. But I love how Solomon, he was confident enough. He was confident enough to use the tools of wisdom that God had given him. Check this out. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 23. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim that the living child is yours. And each says that the dead one belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. Oh, hold on. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to the woman and half to the other. Okay, let's just take a step back real quick. Yo, <laughs> that's... That is a bold move. A little sick, but a bold move. Right? Bold, because how, how do you know that for what Solomon was suggesting, you have to be bold. You have to be confident in the gifts that God's given you in order for you to suggest such a crazy thing. See, I really believe that Solomon, he didn't, he didn't intend to hurt the kid. But he knew what that would do. Solomon trusted the tools that God, give, that God gave him in order to fulfill his calling. But he had to be confident. He had to be confident in his wisdom. Let me say this this morning. You got to be confident in your calling. Dads, you will always feel insecure until you tap into great confidence. Moms, same thing. Leaders, you will always feel insecure until you tap into confidence that doesn't come from you, but comes from God. We need confidence. And so watch what Solomon ends up doing. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who he loved, whoopsies. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, Oh no, my Lord. Give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, all right, we'll be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is the mother. My goodness. His confidence in the wisdom that God had placed over his life. 
because he was confident, he used that tool of wisdom to facilitate an issue that he found in his calling. Can I say this morning that whatever God has called you to, you need confidence to fulfill it, to be successful. So this morning I want to give you real quick, because I told you I'm going to end soon. Real quick, I want to give you characteristics of confidence. And not self-confidence, but God-confidence. <clears throat> and so here's the first one. Humility. Humility. So where self-confidence is, is all about pride and arrogance, right? Like when I'm self-confident, it's, it's, I'm like, it's because of me. Right? Like I, I'm confident, right? Like I said earlier, because I'm looking good, I feel good. It's all about self, but but God confidence is completely different because it's not really about self. It, it, excuse me, it's not, it's not about pride or arrogance, but it's about uh, humility. It's about humility. See, for, for those of you that are taking notes, here, here's that first or that second line. My confidence doesn't come from me but rather is a gift for me. My confidence doesn't come from me, but rather is a gift for me. You gotta understand that the confidence that we have, that it, you, listen, we don't become confident because of who we are. We're, we're confident because of who God is and what God has given us and what God has given us access to. And so for, again, I'm blowing through these real quick because I'm running out of time. But the first one is humility. Here's the second one, is honor. The second one is honor, Proverbs 14, 31. Those who oppress the poor and sought their maker, but helping the poor honors him. Honors, I love this idea of honor. It's a matter of fact, it's one of our core values here at Discovery. Like we want to learn to honor people. See, a lot of us in here, like, we feel confident when we tear people down. I know, I know, that may have hit too close to home for some people. But sometimes, like, we get our confidence because we, we, we can talk about someone else, and when we talk about someone else, it, it makes us feel good. Is that just me? Okay, well, I'll take it. But honor or excuse me, but confidence rooted in the fear of God understands this, and here's your blank. Confidence doesn't break people, but instead it builds people. Confidence doesn't break people, but instead it builds people. And so we're confident, and we build people up by honoring them. By, and when you honor someone, you're affirming value in their life. You're affirming worth in their life. And here's the great thing about honor. Honor, it doesn't matter if you like the person, if you hate the person. It doesn't matter if you get along with the person or you don't get along with the person. We learn to honor up, down, and all around. So we honor everyone. And we, 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 we give worth to people. Our confidence, your confidence should bring worth to people, should bring value to people. And here's the last one. <clears throat> Number three, selflessness. See, where self-confidence is rooted in self-gratification, God-confidence is rooted in selflessness. One of my favorite things is when Jesus, he was about to be uh, crucified He's about to die. And he, uh, this kind of shows like how human Jesus was where he's by himself and, he, and, he, and he's praying to, to God. He's like, God, I don't really want to die. <laughs> like this, I'm kind of having second thoughts. This is not sound fun. And Jesus said, if there's any way that this cup can pass, pass me by, Please, let it, let it. I, if there's any way that this doesn't have to happen where I die, I am for it, God. 
But then he says this, and, and this is what I love. He says, but it's not my will, it's yours. So he's saying, I don't want to do it, but if this is what you want for me, if this is what you have for me, then your will be done. And it shows this idea of how we can live beyond what we want and what we desire. See, I think one of the biggest issues that we see in culture is that everyone's living for themselves. And this is not a um, Christian worldview. I was listening to a podcast, a very uh, mainstream secular podcast, and they said the same thing, that the greatest danger that we're facing in culture is that we're selfish, that we wanted everything for ourselves. And so who would have thought that Jesus would have had the answer of living selfless? Come on, we gotta learn to live selfless. When we feel um, confident, it doesn't mean that we got to put ourselves first. And here's, here's the, the fill in the blank for this. Confidence leads to less of self in order to become selfless. Confidence leads to less self and, and becomes more selfless. Come on, we're, we're called to live selfless. We're called to live selfless. We're, we're called to honor. We're called to walk in humility this morning. That's what God confidence looks like. That's what confidence that is rooted in the fear of the Lord looks like. And King Solomon said that in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. And my prayer for you this morning is that wherever you are, dad, mom, student, Son, daughter, wherever you find yourself in life, that you can walk around in strong confidence because you have access to a God who loves you dearly and has equipped you for an amazing calling, an amazing purpose. Amen, somebody?